Hey everyone, welcome back to Under Hero. Last time we found the save station inside the big tree. So I guess it's time for us to go find the Moth Queen and return this triviality stone that's been clogging our inventory ever since we got it. Now naturally, her throne room is going to be up at the top. But there are a couple of other directions that I can go. I'm not going to be able to go to the right, because those are two locked gates. But we got a couple of paths on the left side that I want to check out, so... Always save the direction you're supposed to go for last. Unless there's another big gate blocking the way. Alright, but certainly the high road should be available to us. We won't be able to take the elevator yet. Yeah, you can at least just jump right through those ledges, and of course, that's blocked too. The throne room is the only place we can get to. Just make my way along these ledges, and it looks like an enemy, but we can talk to them. Alright, so I get that the king is a touchy subject around here. And understandably so. Yeah, we weren't going to be learning a new movement mechanic just like that. Oh, 
Alright, so those two paths that were previously blocked are now open. Oh well, I was hoping for a little more than that. I'm gonna go the high road first because that's where I happen to be and I don't have to climb back up the ledges again to get here. So we're going to have to take the long way around, of course. Yeah, the slingshot is a little tricky. Not only do you have to time it properly, but you also have to aim properly, and if you miss, you've just wasted a shot. Caught me off guard, but I believe I know how to avoid it. It's certainly not a jumpable attack, so I'm gonna have to duck. And this one, I jump. Yeah, it looks like the moth should have hit me, but pretty much as long as you're not just standing still, you'll avoid the attack. Alright, holding down did not go so well that time. But it should be almost done here. I really ought to get in the habit of grabbing the HP orb first and then the potion. Because if you've got full health, the potion turns into money. If you don't, then it turns into health. Anyway, this is 
probably one of the more annoying parts of the early portion of the game. We've got to make our way through a whole bunch of elevators, and there will be occasional fights punctuating them. That is a death pit. As demonstrated. You can always tell because they got the little masked kid skull and crossbones floating up out of them. But as you can see, death just costs you a couple hit points and then puts you right back at the start. Running out of HP will be a game over. I don't intend to do that, but there's at least one point in the game when I probably will. At the very least, you get a free shot at the moths before they start attacking you. But then I have to wait until it actually starts shooting stuff at me to recover my stamina quickly. And that's how you duck the poison spray. What's nice is it takes a while for it to register that you completely dodged, so you can usually get in a shot before your stamina recharges. That yeah, was pretty close timing. I let my stamina go down almost to nothing. But as long as it hits three before I actually have to do any dodging, I'm still good. I don't know if the moth's attack can poison me. There is poison in the game, but there aren't antidotes for purchase just yet. So probably not going to come up in this chapter. Now we gotta wait until the elevators line up. Fortunately, that doesn't take long. And I see a nice horde of coins over there. I don't know that I necessarily need to stand on each of the elevators when they're going down. I should just be able to float to where I want to go. Eh. Could have sacrificed that coin to get back on the elevator quickly, but... Uh, it's not a problem. This part of the game is not timed. Don't remember whether there are any parts that are timed later on. Yeah, I missed my jump, but I do want to fight this moth anyway. Yeah, the news so far just seems to be stuff that I already know. But some of the enemies have important information that we're gonna want to know for later. Yeah, to be honest, enemies you have to fight with a slingshot are probably the worst fights in the game. And still not all that bad. It's just the additional effort of having to wait for your stamina to recharge the same amount as if you wanted to use the sword, and having to aim properly. The mods are easy to hit, some of the enemies later on won't be. And as you'll know if you've followed the channel for a long time, I have really bad aim. So it looks like I do have to take the elevators up here. But we're still going up, so we're on our way.
Now, I don't know whether that moth was telling us that the enemies we fight can also run out of stamina. We've seen that happen. At the moment, we don't really have a lot of ways to capitalize on that. But we can quite certainly get in a few attacks of opportunity if the enemy's too tired to move. I doubt you can parry the powder attack, but I'm pretty sure that if I wanted to, I could attempt to parry that dive bomb. It's just so easy to jump over, I don't really think about it. And throwing as many pellets as possible very quickly takes care of the fights without a big problem. I kind of wonder if there was something down there in the area below the spikes. Not gonna worry about it right now, though. I'm pretty sure I can eventually retread all the ground in the earlier chapters. Yep, the Mothy Chief. I can't even bribe if I wanted to, because we have to defeat her and get the key. And on the bright side, her timing is exactly the same as all the other moths, so I don't have to worry about... She spins faster, that's about it, so I think you get a little bit less time to react. But the reaction is still jump after the third spin. Just means that I've got to get my attacks in a lot faster than I normally would. And I don't expect that she's going to throw powder at me. And a very nice chunk of experience. So, like I said before, I want to get nine stamina points, and this is about the right point in the game to be hitting that. I'll be going for strength from now on, just to make the battles go a bit faster. And here we have a very long drop filled with coins. You don't want to have to watch me go through this whole thing at normal speed, I'm sure. And yep, here's that chest we saw earlier when the chief was flying up. And a very welcome health upgrade. This is why I don't really upgrade my health with levels, because you can actually find health upgrades throughout the game. You don't find strength upgrades or stamina upgrades. Well, that's not entirely true. There are stamina upgrades, but they don't increase your stamina. So, with the Mothy Chief taken care of, it's time to head downward and take on the Gang Boss. And another completely new enemy type. And first, we'll take on the advance guard. Hmm. 
Alright, well, fate was certainly the better answer of the two that I heard there. So, it's nice having enough stamina that I can swing my sword twice from full. That's not the reason I want nine, but it's a nice perk. Well, I didn't get much for it, but they're a pretty easy enemy by now. We fought tons of those. This one's new. Oh, how nice! Wait a minute. I think hugs are code for something else. I don't know if I should be dodging those rocks. I think I should be knocking them back with a shield. And I missed a dodge there, but my opponent is tired, so I get a little bit of an opportunity. Jumps are a little harder to time, but... There we go. Yeah, if we parry the rocks successfully, especially the low ones, they'll go right back and hit this thing, so... It's actually extra damage, and it can be a groovy attack, which is neat. And it got tired, but it's too far away for me to hit it with a sword, so I gotta slingshot it. Honestly, you don't even have to duck the high attack. You can just stand there and it'll miss. And you still get credit for the dodge! There we go. That's the right way to do it. Now we've got moving spike traps. Fortunately, they're just a small HP loss. So yeah, that's our hit. When faced with flying rocks, we want to be blocking rather than jumping or ducking. Especially since jumping and ducking are kind of hard to distinguish between the rock arcs in time to react. With the shield, all you gotta do is pull it up. And if the rock misses, you're fine. I don't think these guys have a specific weakness to the slingshot, though. I'm sure there are some enemies that do. Well, that was a pretty useless collection of rocks. I'm getting a lot of potions, I'm just never in a situation where I need to use them. Thank <laughs> you. 
So that's how you pay attention to the conversations from earlier and use them to your benefit. Fortunately, this race is really easy. They say I'm dragging behind, but look at the progress bar. I'm way ahead. Now the downside is, there are some enemies that you may get caught fighting along the way, but they're a lot weaker than the same enemies outside of this race. And here I am, taking some damage to save time. Not a big problem in the long run. You need to wait a little bit for some of these spikes, but not too long. You want to keep pressing ahead as best you can. As long as you're not knocked down to zero HP, you're still on your feet and running. There we go. I avoided that fight. Probably should have fought it. Got the experience. But I don't know what mandatory fights may lie ahead, and I want to make sure I have enough time to deal with all of them. The progress bar is sadly no real indication of how you're doing. That's an easy one to skip. This one, not so much. I think this one you have to fight. I can't imagine how you get past it. Yeah, I really need to get those extra bits of chip damage. And perhaps the worst part is you can't actually see the progress bar while you're fighting, but I'm still way ahead and the boss is only just past the halfway point. So a couple of tricky platforms to navigate, but nothing our jumping isn't up to handling. And you can ignore the text that pops up too. The boss is nowhere near winning, but I am. So the gang boss is another mini boss, different color. Seems to be the same timing as the mods. But she gets hit by more of the rocks if I reflect them back. The downward attack always catches me off guard because that's when you actually have to do something about. But I think we're in pretty fine shape. And there we go. Alright, that's both keys in our possession. But the video's running a little on the long side for me to actually go unlock that gate and proceed at this point, so I'm just gonna head back to the save station. And leave the basement level of the tree until next time.
I'm pretty sure nobody has anything new to say based on any of the actions that we've taken. Kinda wanted to see the status of my shield, but I can't do that outside of combat. We've got no new audio cassettes, so it's still gonna be Mr. Stitches for the while. We'll get more next time, don't worry. And I'll leave you with the new journal entries. See you in part four.